Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I don't have to know how much it costs. Because I know what I've done. I know who I used to be. I'm glad I don't have to know how much it costs to see my sins upon the cross. Hallelujah, Jesus. Online family, good morning and welcome to Friendship Missionary Baptist Church where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Orante Jenkins. Listen, do us a favor, say hello to us. Let us know where you're worshiping from and then love and share the feed. Love and share it. So the world may know that we are still praising our God. We're still worshiping a mighty God, a strong God, my strong tower, my refuge. That's who we're worshiping on today. Hallelujah. In-house family, good morning to you. Hallelujah. If you are able, please join us. Stand to your feet. It is now time for our responsive reading. Good morning, church. We're going to have the responsive reading. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks... He break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, Carry one for another. And if, and if any, any man, man hunger, hunger, let him eat at home, that, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. <laughs> It's time for praise and worship. It's time for praise and worship. If you are able, please stand on your feet and join us. This is not a spectator sport. This is kind of where we all can get involved. That's only if you got a reason to praise him, though. Anybody got a reason to praise him? Anybody got a reason to tell God thank you? Anybody got a reason to say, Lord, I love you? Anybody got a reason other than me? Hallelujah, hallelujah. The song says God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Amen? Hallelujah. Hey, 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 he's 
able Y'all know it, come on and help us sing it Say God is able God is able to do Just what he just said what he said he would do He's gonna fulfill He's gonna fulfill Every promise to you Don't give up on God Don't give up on God Cause he won't, Cause he won't give up on you He's able He's able He's able Jesus, something happens. 
Every time I call his name, he shows up. No matter when I call him, no matter what's going on, even if I can't say it out loud, when I think the name of Jesus, something happens. The atmosphere changes, and even if he don't change, change the situation, he still shows up because he changes me, and I'm able to deal with the situation. So every time I call him, the old church say, the more I call him, the better I feel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He has a name that's above every name. So when I call that name, everything else must bow. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something happens when I call you, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Something happens when I call you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something happens. Something happens. When I call you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Something happens. Something happens. When I call your name. Something happened, something happened. When I call your name, when I call, I call you Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Demons tremble when I call your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
if you don't believe it don't call him if you don't want him to come but if you need God to show up just call his name hey. precious how precious how precious how precious it is when we call the name of Jesus you know every one of those circumstances got to let go when you call the name of Jesus there's no issue that's too big when you call the name of Jesus the enemy must flee when you call the name of Jesus. Oh, that circumstance don't seem so heavy when you call the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, when we call you, when we call when we call you, something happens. When we call you, just let him work it out. Let him work it out. Oh, let him work it out right now. I know, I know you're crying all night long because your, your children don't seem that they're going to get right. Just let him work it out. 
I know that loved one, that, that sister, that brother, they're not where you want them to be. Just let God work it out. If God got it, you got to let it go. So lay down at night. Rest yourself. God, we need you right now. We need you right now, God. We need you to walk with us, God, this day like you've never walked with us before, oh God. Father God, sometimes these burdens seem so heavy and it make us take our eyes off all the blessings that's right before us, God. But this day, God, we're going to call your name and we're going to expect God for change to come. So God, I'm not going to stay up all night long worrying about something when I've given it to you. I'm going to leave it in the palm of your hands and I'm going to rest myself. So God, we need you in this community. We need you making way on these hedges and highways for us, oh God. Because it do get hard sometimes. But God, we're not going to worry about it. We're going to let you work it out. God, we need you down at the schoolhouse. We need you out there with our children, God, where nowadays you can't encourage them by calling the name of Jesus, but it don't stop them from calling it. So God, put us in place where we can be ready to encourage our babies, God, to grow them, God, to help them understand that this is a time, Father God, this age that they're in, God, and you're using them just the same. Father God, we thank you for those that we have working within the system, God, that are doing their level best, God, to feed them, encourage them, to grow them. But God, remind us that it starts at home. It starts at home with mama and daddy. It starts at home with sister and brother. It starts at home, Father God, with us putting you first and keeping you all through every tenant of our day from the time we get up, Father God, to the time we lay down to slumber. God, we need you. Oh, we need you, God. We need you now because we need to be a remnant, God, in this land. Father God, as we've out in these highways and in the hedges, Father God, let us remember who we are. Let us remember who we belong to, God, and that if we have to use words, but otherwise testify to your goodness. And God, we need you in this place today. Oh, God, to elevate this service higher and higher and higher, God, that we draw nigh to you, God, for those that may be sitting here, God, and they got troubles on their mind, they got aches in their heart, God, that you will free them up long enough for the word to penetrate. God, let them know that they're in a safe place right now, God. This is the hospital, God. This is where we come to get healed, God. This is where we come for change, God. This is where we come for encouragement, God. So give us the discernment how to engage Father God with our brothers and sisters who've come through this door use your manservant use him mightily use your prayer warriors Father God use them mightily use your songbirds God use them mightily use your people God use us mightily we're careful to give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise and we ask everybody just shout out with the amen Amen and amen in Jesus' matchless name. Hey, oh Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, put your hands together, give our God praise all over this sanctuary. Come on, put your hands together, give our God praise all over this sanctuary. We certainly thank God for each and every one of you that have joined us in this place and space today. We come today, this is the first Sunday, to celebrate the death, burial, moreover the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. We're grateful to those of you that showed up at 9 for the Sunday school hour. We praise the Lord for you. And then for those of you that still believe that the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous avail, we thank God for you as you rise bright early in the morning, Monday through Friday, and engage in the FNBC Prayer Lifeline, affectionately known as God's Lifeline. Somebody say amen to that. And then we are super excited. We're always, always excited about the opportunity to study God's word collectively together Wednesday. No better opportunity Wednesday at noon and Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Amen. Amen. We need you here, whether you're joining us in this place in space or whether you join us by way of our e-campus at 6 in person at noon. We need you here as we hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to we the church during the study 
of God's word. Listen, everybody can't do everything, but everybody is charged to do something. Amen. And these are wonderful opportunities in which God uses us for the glorification and edification of his kingdom. These are opportunities that he has charged us with right here in the life of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. I hope uh, that you all are resting and I hope you are meal prepping. I hope that you are getting adequate exercise because our ministry efforts this time of the year are many and plenteous. Amen. Amen. There's so much going on in the life of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. Wonderful opportunity to provide outreach to those that are within reach is this Saturday by way of Friendship Cares. Amen. Amen. Surely thank God for each and every one of you that continue to come and serve and engage in those efforts. And then there are celebratory uh, reasons that we have in the life of the Friendship Church. We're looking forward to this Saturday uh, as we have a pastor's anniversary fellowship scheduled for this Saturday. Amen. At 4 o'clock, it is slated for food, fun, and fellowship. We want you to come and celebrate with us at 4 o'clock. Amen. And then if the Lord would bless us. and I, Well, let me say this. I got, I got to remember to say this. If you ordered a T-shirt. Now, Rakita's going to either nod that I got this right or frown that I got it wrong. If you ordered T-shirts uh, for Pastor's Anniversary uh, Celebration, you can pick them up Wednesday at noon or 6. Amen. Wednesday at noon or 6 or Thursday at 6. Is she smiling or frowning? Amen. All right. So I got that part right. And then if the Lord will allow us to see it, we're going to celebrate eight years of what God continues to do in the life of the pastor and the people. We certainly look forward to sharing. Pray for Pastor Danny Lewis as he's coming to tell us what thus says the Lord as we celebrate eight years. Uh, and listen, don't forget that our color. Can y'all tell by that flyer what our colors are? Amen. Purple Green. and black are our colors. Uh, I was told to remind y'all of that as if y'all did not already know. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, because our culinary ministry is going to be preparing for our fellowship dinner after service Amen. next Sunday, we will have sanct uh, adult Sunday school in the sanctuary next Sunday. Somebody say amen to that. And Amen. then not only are we celebrating uh, this month, but we're looking forward to our Breast Cancer Awareness Seminar. Amen. Amen. On October the 19th, 9 a.m., we need your face in the place. Now, this is not just regulated to women. Amen. Amen. This is for both male and female uh, alike. We're looking forward to an exciting presentation from LPN, Janet Halliburton, and so many other testimonies. Uh, listen, you can make it. You can be healed. You can be delivered. I thought somebody who had been healed of breast cancer would have said something. And you need to come to hear the testimony of those that have been healed and delivered. And then uh, we're looking forward to October the 20th Survivor Sunday. Amen. Amen. We're looking forward to Survivor Sunday. We need, we need each and every cancer survivor, each and every cancer survivor, no matter what uh, that cancer uh, was, we need you to meet Deacon Neal immediately following service. Deacon, where are we meeting you immediately following service? Uh, meet over to my, is this my left or right? Uh, to my left, amen. My immediately left right. after service, you need to see Deacon Neal because the world needs to hear your testimony and we're looking forward to you sharing, amen? amen. And amen. then, y'all, if that was not enough during the month of October, wonderful opportunities to share, uh, serve, and celebrate. Our Friendship Cares Ministry is going to host a resource fair. <laughs> amen. If somebody tell you that there's nothing to do in the life of the Friendship Church, they lying. Amen. As we're excited about how we get to celebrate, we get to serve in the life of Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. If you want to stay in touch and in tune with all of those things as well as what's going on uh, in the life of the kingdom, you can do so by way of our church website, our church social media outlets. Not only what's going on in here, but in the kingdom at large. If, you, if this is your first time in the Friendship Church stand, if this is your first time sharing with us, amen, amen, stand, amen. Come on, friendship, love them. Come on, friendship, love them. Remain standing, please. Tell us your name, where you're from, and how you heard about our service.
Amen. All right. All right. Remain standing, young man. They not they not normally they don't normally make noise when people talking. They not normally rude like that. But go ahead and finish your standard sentence and then they gonna celebrate. Okay, now y'all love him now. Amen. <laughs> Remain standing. Don't be seated. All right, my brother here. Amen. Remain standing. All right. Houston, uh, Ohio, and our brother from here in town. I would love to meet y'all in person immediately following service. Is that all right? Cuz, we're going to meet you. Our newlyweds, we're going to meet you and our newly found brother immediately following service. Minister in training, Tony Hunter and uh, Deaconess Muriel Robbins is going to make sure you get through the crowd uh, and get to me. Amen. Y'all love them one more time. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Let me see what else I got here in this iPad. Listen, bottom of my heart, depths of my soul, I uh, want to say thank you for all you continue to do in love for God, and not only love for God, but the people that inhabit his kingdom. Shout out to everybody uh, who was here yesterday as we concluded um, our series for the year, our Woman to Woman Wellness Brunch. Come on, y'all, celebrate. Amen. Shout out to Sister Rakita Willis and her entire team. And for those of you that came to participate, we do know that you can uh, attend to your mental health and wellness and believe in Christ as well. And so we are looking at a holistic individual in service to our kingdom. And that's a part of the efforts in which we extend. Listen, it's giving time. It's giving time. Amen. All right, I'm going to try it one more time. It's giving time. Listen, you do know that this is the first Sunday in which we bless our benevolence ministry. And because of your obedience and your kindness, we are often able uh, to aid and assist those who are have-nots in their time of need. want to say thank you. Uh, you continue to, even in advance, give your pastoral anniversary love gift. Thank you, thank you so much to those of you that continue to give uh, from Leading Lady and First Family and I. We thank you so much. Listen, request, request here from our finance ministry. Listen, here's what we need you to do. Don't just put the Johnson family on your envelope. Amen. Amen. Because in April, if you do what's right, you got to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Amen. So don't just put the Johnsons. Make sure you put your first and your last name that our finance ministry might be able uh, to give you adequate and proper documentation once. I pray y'all pay your taxes once you have to have notification thereof. So don't just put the Johnsons or the Jenkins. Give us first and last name. That is a humble request from our finance department. You can give by way of the envelope. Some of you have been uh, given online by way of Givelify Some give by way of our church website. Some of you love us from all across this land and country and you do it by way of U.S. Postal Mail. Some of you give right here in the sanctuary by the envelopes that are present. It matters not to us how you give as long as you honor God's word out of obedience and you give. Amen? Amen. All right, stand on both sides. Stand on both sides. Face the outer wall and you will be under the direction of our ushers. You. Good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over, give, and it will come back to you when you give unto the Lord. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over. Oh, oh, oh. 
will come back to you when you give unto the Lord. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. Give, and it will come back to you when you give unto the Lord. standing all over this place amen God we thank you for these gifts that we have received they come from our hands but been released directly from our hearts continue to give us wisdom knowledge and direction that we use them for the glorification and the edification of your kingdom is our prayer being good stewards thereof in Jesus name amen really quickly right before our music ministry comes again uh, want to say uh, Y'all don't really get excited about this kind of stuff, uh, but want to say shout out to our trustee ministry. Uh, Y'all know during monsoon, some of you all are like uh, the Jenkins family. You had to get a new roof put on your house because of the storms, but shout out to our trustees. Uh, Y'all can't see it, but it's a new roof. Amen. 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 So shout out to our trustees. Uh, for making sure our facilities remain intact, uh, that we may continue to serve God's kingdom. When we will have been blessed again by way of our music ministry, you're going to meet me in 1 Corinthians. You're going to meet me in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, as our music ministry comes. <laughs>
still work. See the blood, the blood Jesus shed still. Yeah. His blood still works. See His blood still works. His blood still works. Oh, I know it works. His blood still works. See His blood still works. The blood that heals is to work. His blood still works. The blood that covered me is to work. His blood still works. Oh, say yes. Yes. Say yes. Yes. Say yes. Yes. Say yes. Yes. I know it works. Yes. Say yes. Shed for me, yes. see it, 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 it, works. Say his blood still works. His blood still works. Oh, the blood, the blood. Jesus shed still works. Say the blood, the, the blood. Jesus shed still Corinthians chapter number 13. I am going to read verses 1 through 5. Actually, verses 1 through 3. You are going to read verses 4 through 13. When you get home, First Corinthians chapter number thirteen, beginning at verse number one, we continue our conversation about growing church. You have that verse, say Amen. 
The Bible speaks and says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, somebody say love, love. I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, somebody say love, love. I am nothing. Three says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and I have not charity, somebody say love, love. it profiteth me nothing. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, though I have matriculated through a variety of elite institutions and I have high academic acumen. If I don't love folks, I'm just talking loud and saying nothing. Um, and though I can preach prophetically, can exegete texts and pontificate profoundly, and understand all the I's dotted and T's crossed in the Bible. I can recite it. If Thomas Boyd was here, he would say from kiver to kiver. Though I can do all of that, if I have not love, I am nothing. Though I get my tithes and my offering, and every time pastor asks for sacrificial giving, I do so. Give in every opportunity I can to those that are lesser than I, even if I work to the point of exhaustion, if I don't love, it profiteth me nothing. The grass withers and the flowers fade, the word of our God shall stand forever. You may be seated. Preacher wants to talk about. as it relates to a growing church, the essential affection. Essential affection. I'll give you three points and leave you, leave you alone. If you say amen real good, I just need about 11 and a half minutes. Our society, I fear, is confused about love. Our society, I fear, sees love as something that's expressed in a greeting card. Our society, I fear, sees love as something expressed in a date night out to your local eatery, accompanied by champagne and roses. Our society, I fear, is confused about love and sees it as merely gifts and gags that tickle fancies and flip bippies. But if we are going to continue to grow as a church in these 11 minutes together, we must, it is imperative that we understand the importance of love. I am grateful that there are people that come to join this local assembly. I am grateful that there are people that continue to give. I am grateful there are people that continue to study. I am grateful that there are people that continue to pray. But I am over the top excited as we grow in our study, as we grow in our giving, as we grow in our serving, and as we grow in our praying. I'm over the top excited with anticipation to see how we grow in love. 
You can study without loving, but you cannot love without study. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. You can pray, ladies and gentlemen, you can pray without loving, but you cannot love without praying. The biblical kind of love is one that's found in the epitome of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Christ loves love so much that he lists it as an essential quality of every believer. Ladies and gentlemen, this quality that Jesus lists as essential has to be nourished. It has to be nurtured in the life of every disciple individually as well as collectively in a place and in the people we call the church. Love is not just vital in Christianity. Love is essential. Jesus, the Christ himself, said that the second greatest commandment of all is that we love our neighbors as ourselves. If you don't like it, read the Bible in Ephesians chapter number 5, verses 1 through 2. The Bible says, By ye therefore followers, or be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ has loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice unto God that renders a sweet-smelling savor in the nostrils of God. Read Colossians chapter number 3, verses 12 through 14. The Bible says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness, of mind, meekness, long suffering. 13 says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another as Christ forgave us, you got to forgive other people. 14 says, after all of that, above all those things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. 1 John chapter number 3, verse number 23 says, and this is his commandment that we should believe on the same on the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us this commandment love is not an option love is a commandment of Christ First John chapter number 5 and verse number 3 says, For this is the love of God that you and I keep his commandments, and keeping his commandments, they be not grievous. Love, ladies and gentlemen, above what we say. Love is, is above how we serve. Love must be a priority in your life and mine. Well, Pastor, why must I, I knew it'd be quiet right in here today. Um, priority, love must be a priority, but also there is power in love. I said this, this sounds good. I think it was Wednesday past, might have been the Wednesday before. Some of y'all done some stuff for the sake of love you never said you would do. Let me see if I can rile you up in here today. When you was in your sister circle, you swore before sister and God that you don't care who he was, you don't care who he is. There was a list of non-negotiables and you said it doesn't matter who he is or what he says, you were never going to X, Y, and Z. Or, but when that Chanel cologne hit the room, I wish I had witnesses in here. I don't care who he is. I don't care what he does. I don't care where he takes me. I don't care where he's from. I don't care he, where he, what he says. I ain't going to never. Oh, but love crept in. And you doing stuff now, you got to repent that you lied for saying you never would do. Oh, she ain't going to make me do this, and ain't no woman going to make me do that, and only my mama can get me to do this. There's no woman on earth that I would do that for, and here you are eating spaghetti every time she cook it. I got one or two witnesses. If you don't know what that means, see me after church. She would never get me to do. She'll never get me to say. She'll never get me to go. But, boy, you fell in love. 
and you doing some stuff now you lied to the homies and said you never would do love is a powerful thing ladies and gentlemen much like uh, or liken unto the kingdom of God there's power uh, in love watch this where there is lack of love in our congregation sin creeps in Griping creeps in, complaining creeps in, uh, innuendos and gossip creep in when there is no love. Infighting creeps in, jealousy creeps in, backbiting creeps in a congregation when there is no love. But when the congregation truly loves one another, Deacon Rob, it becomes a place of not exclusion but a place of acceptance. It becomes a place of encouragement. It becomes a place where you are glad to be. It becomes a place where there can be spiritual growth when love abides. Christian Swartz, one of my favorite authors, he says it like this. He says, I've done some research, and he says, my research indicates that there is a highly significant relationship between the ability of a church to demonstrate love and their long-term growth. He says, people do not want to hear us talk about love. People want to experience how Christian love really works. Acts chapter number 2 verses 42 through 47 says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. They sold their possessions and their goods and they parted with them every man making sure that every man's need was met. And they continued daily, daily on one accord in the temple, in the breaking of bread, in the house of the Lord. I'm going somewhere. In the singleness of heart, praising the Lord, having favor with all. And the Lord added to the church, not because of how good the music sounds. But the Lord added to the church daily those that would be saved because of the love that was exuded and exhibited amongst the people of God. When, 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 you get, you, when you get a group of people together who genuinely believe in a thing and who practice that in which they believe and they really enjoy practicing together, watch this. It becomes such a contagious atmosphere that you can't keep people from coming. I, I remind y'all all the time, as much as y'all think that they come to church because your pastor is the best looking in town, that's not the case. Uh, I remind you all of the time that people come because they want to be connected. And they want to be connected to a people that are not perfect. They want to be connected to a people that are striving in a, watch this, in a Christ-like manner to care and love one for the other. There was, a, there was a heathen that was asked a question about Christianity at one particular point, and here's what the heathen said about Christianity. He said, you got to give them credit. He said, you got to give them credit because they love one another, and they'll even die for one another. Isn't it something that somebody who doesn't even believe in Christ can look upon Christians and notice not what they're wearing, not watch this, what they drive, but how we love one another. If our church really expressed all of its spiritual gifts, there are wonderful and gifted and talented people in this church. If all of us operated in our spiritual gifts and we became spiritual giants, but if we didn't love one another, we are nothing. If, if, if our church had such faith that we had people healed from cancer, miracles took place every Sunday, but we didn't love the person we sat in the pew next to, then we are nothing. If we gave 50% of all, the, our, all of our tithes and offering to various missions in this country and our outside of this country and all around the world and didn't love one another, we are nothing. Okay, how many people pack the pews? I don't, have, I don't care how much money you raise. If you're going to keep growing, you got to grow in, in love. I, I, you, I, I think I got to get four or five amens right here because I'm glad that I lead and I serve alongside people that are patient and kind. I'm glad that I leave and serve alongside people that are not jealous, boastful, proud, or rude. I'm glad... 
that I lead and serve alongside people that don't demand that they get it their way right away. I'm glad that I lead and serve alongside people that are not irritable and they don't keep records of when they've been wronged by the person next to them. I'm glad I lead and I serve alongside of people that are, glad, that are not glad about injustice that occurs against their enemies, but they rejoice when justice wins. I'm glad that I lead and serve alongside people that never quit, they never give up, they never give out, they never lose faith, and they're always hopeful, and hope abides and endures no matter how bleak it gets. Our church is gifted, our church is talented, but listen, all that's going to pass away, but God and his love will last forever. There are three things, and I'm almost done. There are three things that will endure beyond how well we preach. There are three things that will endure beyond how well we sing. There are three things that will endure beyond how much we give, and those three things are faith, hope, and love. And love is the greatest of all things that will endure forever. Tony, I read a book one time, and here's what the book said. The book says, the overwhelming testimony of the New Testament is that love, both expressed and experienced amongst members of a particular body, is absolutely essential if that body is going to remain alive and healthy. There's the priority of love. There's the power of love. Now, this one will lose seven of y'all, and then there's the practice of love. Um, uh, can I help y'all in here today and be transparent? Um, practicing Christ like, like love is not easy. Practicing the agape love of Christ is a truth. Now, I, I, I know people in your ministry get on your nerve. I know people on your road get on your nerve. I know the guy in the pulpit every now and then gets on your nerves. But enduring all the aforementioned is not the true test of your faith. But watch this. Showing agape love is the true testament of any believer's faith. 1 John chapter number 3, verse 16 through 18 says, Hereby I perceive that, that, that we, the loved of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. But whoso had this world's good, and seeth his brother in need, and shutted up his bowels of compassion from him, and dwelleth the love of God in him, how so? 18 says, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Here's the question that's begged. The question that is begged is, what does love look like? I'm glad you asked, and because you did, I'll tell you. Love, watch this, has hands to help other people. Love has feet that run to the poor and the needy. Love has eyes that sees misery and want. Love has ears that can hear the sighs and the sorrows of men. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want the answer to the question of what love looks like, that's what love looks like. First Corinthians, ladies and gentlemen, is the standard by which we should measure our love for one another. Here it is. Love never fails. Love is always kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not rude. Love is not proud. Love is not self-serving. Love, ladies and gentlemen, does not get angry easy. Love does not keep record to get back at you. Love takes no delight in the evil of others. Love rejoices in the truth. Love always protects. Love always hopes and love. This is one of my favorites. Love always perseveres. Pastor, why is that your favorite? Love persevering is always my favorite because I know how I mess up. Love is always my favorite because I know when I go places, I should not say things I shouldn't say. And all of the people that I've hurt, I love that love perseveres. And you may not have ever said anything you ought not have said. You might not have ever gone anywhere. You ought not have gone. You might not have been anywhere last night that you should not have been. But I'm glad that love perseveres and the practice of love can be exemplified and exuded by Jesus the Christ I'm almost done if you look at Jesus's example 
uh, in John chapter number 13, verses 1 through 5. You read it when you get home. If you see Jesus there, Jesus is exercising the epitome of humility. And I stop by to tell you, if you're going to love people according to the way Christ loves us, you got to humble yourself. Because to die for somebody that does not deserve it, you got to humble yourself. To forgive people that lie on you and put your name on the wings of the morning, you have to humble yourself. For people that set traps for you, you have to humble yourself in order to love them. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, in that particular text, is washing the feet of his disciples. And if you look at the humility he exudes, it is, watch this, comes from the compound Greek word. Watch this, when you put them together, it's to think lowly of oneself. You got to really love somebody that you want to hit upside the head. I got five witnesses over here. You got to really, really, really love somebody that you want to cuss out. You really got to love somebody that you want to cut. You got to really love somebody in order to forgive them when they've done you wrong. You really got to love somebody who you know has done you wrong, yet Christ has called you to Christian love. Boxing promoter Don King was asked a question one time, Deacon Dawson, he was asked a question uh, about his accomplishments. And Don King replied, sometimes I amaze myself and I say that with all humility. I got one person that got it over here. Nothing can be said with humility, it can only be done. Love is selfless love is merciful and Jesus in that particular text is washing the feet of his disciples who would later on betray him well. and ladies and gentlemen you're gonna have to love some people that get on your nerves you're gonna have to love some people that lie on you you're gonna have to love some people that betray you because watch this loving them doesn't keep them out of trouble it keeps you out of trouble Uh, and, and that's why the song, I'm done, that's why the song says, uh, the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Now watch this. If there was no Jesus there, the next stanza would be a lie. The song says the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. And because I have Jesus in me, it's so, it's so easy. Stand to your feet all over this place the central theme of the bible is this and if y'all was going to shout here it is here's the central theme of the bible the central theme of the bible is that god is in love with an imperfect and inadequate people and see we wait for people to check all the boxes before we will allow ourselves to love them but we have a God who is in love with an imperfect and inadequate people. I'm going to say it again. We are imperfect and we are inadequate and he loves us anyway. We are imperfect, we are inadequate, he blesses us anyway. We are imperfect and we are inadequate and he heals us anyway. We are imperfect and we are inadequate and he delivers us anyway. We are imperfect and we are inadequate and he gives us cars and homes that our credit score doesn't deserve. We are imperfect and inadequate and you got a degree right now that your IQ could not get you. And if he is in love with such an imperfect and inadequate people on our best day, our righteousness is as filthy rags. If we are, he is in love with us anyway, so much that he gave his only begotten son. You ought to be able to serve alongside somebody if friendship cares. You ought to be able to serve alongside somebody, sit next to them in Bible enrichment. You ought to be able to sit alongside somebody in Sunday school. You ought to be able to watch this say good morning to somebody that's really not one of your favorite people. Because what if God stopped talking to you based on 
if you did what he liked or not? What if he stopped blessing you because you made him mad? What if he stopped healing you because you didn't do everything that he told you to do? We serve a God that loves us anyhow. And when you, uh, we, can, we can grow this ministry in number. We can grow this ministry financially. Our facilities can be perfect and they can be excellent. But if we don't show the love of Jesus Christ, if we don't show the love of Jesus Christ, I'm not just talking about go along to get along. If we don't show the love of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we are we are nothing. Every head be bowed and every eye be closed. It's easy for you to stand in church right now. Pastor, I love everybody in here. This is my church family. And the sermon sounded good. But you're going to work tomorrow and there's somebody that don't go to church with you. You're going to work tomorrow and there's somebody that you don't like and they don't like you driving home and somebody lives on your left or your right and you know they don't like you and the truth of the matter is you may not like them the truth of the matter is you've been serving alongside some people and you've been doing it superficially and you have not, you have not asked God to purge you and cleanse you to give you the same love he has for you and I to that person that you may not like it's easy to love the person that's sitting on your pew and on your row for the sake of superficial love. But the Christ-like love that we are called to in this world, I don't know about you, but I need help with it. I need God to remind me on days like first Sunday how much he loves me in spite of me. I need God to remind me on days like first Sunday that he loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son that there was no substitute for my sin. There was no substitute for my life. He gave all he had. Somebody say for me. When I do things that he doesn't like. When I say things that he doesn't want me to say. When I go places that he doesn't want me to go. He still loves me. In spite of me. And I'm going to pray for us all. God we love you. We thank you God. Sometimes it's hard want to start with we ourselves. God, sometimes we don't do everything you tell us to do. Sometimes we don't say everything you tell us to say. Sometimes we don't go all of the places you tell us to go. God, sometimes we read your word and we don't even obey the word that we read. God, sometimes we say oh, amen to a sermon that we don't practice in our daily lives. But God, even in our humanity, we're asking you to forgive us. We're asking you, God, to cleanse us. And God, anything that will prohibit us from doing those things according to the example that's epitomized by your darling son, remove it in the name of Jesus. God, there's some people that have hurt us. There's some people that are talking about us. There's some people that are lying on us. There's some people that are putting our names on the wings of the morning, God. And we've grown to have a disdain for them. We've grown to have a dislike for them. Right now, we give it to you. We want you to, God, fill our hearts with the same love that you had for us when you sent your darling son Jesus. Doesn't mean that they're going to stop talking about us. We're going to love them anyway. Doesn't mean they're going to stop lying on us. We're going to love them anyway. Doesn't mean they're going to stop mistreating us or misusing us. But God, we're going to love them anyway. Because our growth depends on it. Drawing nigh unto you depends upon it. Drawing together collectively, growing together collectively depends on it. Forgive us. Wash us. Continue to love us and grow us as we continue to forgive, as we continue to love, as you loved us by sending your son. It is in the blessed name of your darling son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all God's saints say it. Amen. Our leaders are coming. Our leaders are coming. Friendship, slip your hand in the air really quickly. Now, these are not people that are always easy to love. Truth of the matter is, we're not always easy to like. But through it all, we recognize that God loved us. And if, we, if he can forgive us, we can forgive one another. To the tune and extent that we serve in this kingdom together, we study together, we give together. And if you want to become a member of this local assembly, all you have to do is come down now, give one of these 
man of God, this woman of God, your hand. Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. We never going to be a perfect church. If you're waiting for us to check a box, we, we probably will never check every box. We're not going to always do everything you like, but we're trying striving in an attitude of excellence to serve a perfect God. If you want to become a member of this local assembly, all you have to do is come right now. Don't put off for tomorrow what it is you can do today. This is always a twofold invitation, yours to accept it or yours to reject it, ours to extend it. And we certainly want to do as God has so ordered us to do in this place today. If you want to become a member, it's easy. If you may not want to walk down the aisle, just raise your hand. You may not want to walk down the aisle, just raise your hand. Somebody from friendship will grab that hand and make sure you love and acknowledge. If you want to become a member of this local assembly, the time is now. The songwriter says, get in a hurry and do it right now. Come on, friendship, put your hands together. None have come. But there's certainly room for a minute. Raise your hand if you have not been served. Raise your hand if you have not been served. Raise your hand if you have not been served. Raise your hand if you have not been served. To my right, mountain. To my right, and it flows to the lowest valley. Keep that hand up if you had not been served. out and every eye be closed. God, we come today to celebrate the greatest gift that mankind has ever known. God, we ask that these elements that are in our hand, though they be natural, we ask that you bless them as they represent a supernatural experience. Now, God, even in blessing these elements, we ask that you would cleanse us and that you would wash us and purge us and God make us whiter than snow. God, for we, we don't want to eat nor do we want to drink damnation to our very own souls. God, cleanse us, wash us, purge us. Bless these elements is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To the high, uh, yes, mountain. This bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As often as we do eat, we do show forth remembrance of his death, burial, moreover his resurrection, until he will have returned. Break it and eat ye all of it. This cup represents his shed blood. As often as we do drink, we do show forth remembrance of his death, burial, and resurrection. Moreover, his resurrection until he will have returned. Drink ye all of it. Never lose his power. Scripture says that after supper they sang a hymn. They went out to the Mount of Olives. We don't have 
Amount of Olives, we have our various homes and destinations. We're going to ask all of our first time visitors, will you come at this time? All of our first time guests, will you come? All of our first time guests. Never lose. All of our first time guests, will you come? All of our first time guests, will you come? Don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Don't move. All of our first time guests. Will you come? Don't move, don't move. All of our first time guests, will you come? Amen. All of our first time guests. Now y'all do me a favor, turn around and thank everybody that joined us by way of our e-campus for joining us here today. Don't forget that immediately following service, all of our cancer survivors, all of our cancer survivors, you're going to meet Deacon Sean Neal down here to my left. All right, go in peace is our prayer. Never, 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 never. The blood, the blood. 